In the previous section, we discussed the two major psychological mechanisms that underlie expectation of pain relief. In this section, we're going to talk about how that expectation is translated into a neural mechanism underlying pain relief. The critical thing to understand in, in trying to get at this neural mechanism is pain modulation. So you've heard in other lectures what the pain pathways are. They consist of a nociceptor and the primary afferent, these small fiber primary afferents. They terminate in the dorsal horn and then on the contralateral side, their axons of these spinal thalamic tract neurons project to the thalamus and from there are distributed to the cortex. So this is the pain transmission pathway. Now, in addition to the pain transmission pathway, we now know that there's a pathway running in the opposite direction, the pain modulatory pathway, that actually controls, if you will, the volume of the pain message that arrives in the brain. So how does this work? The first discovery that led to our understanding of this modulatory pathway was that of stimulation-produced analgesia. First discovered in rats, and then quickly applied to people. This uh, slide shows a place in the central nervous system where you can place an electrode. It's the periaqueductal gray here. It's a coronal section. Uh, this is the midbrain. These are the cerebral peduncles here. This is the periaqueductal gray. A stimulating electrode can be placed stereotaxically in the human brain. This is a uh, an x-ray, an anterolateral projection of the human skull, and you can see the electrodes placed in the depth of the brain. In rats and in people, this is a human brain, activation of these electrodes produces pain relief. And, he, and we now know the anatomy of this pathway. It begins in the cortex here, runs through the hypothalamus, down through the periaqueductal gray, there is a synapse in the medulla, and then fibers run down to the spinal cord. And it inhibits the spinal thalamic tract, right? So when you activate this descending pathway anywhere along this route, it causes inhibition of the spinal thalamic tract neurons, so less of a pain message gets to the thalamus and to the cortex. I'd also like to talk about the mu opioid receptor. It's called mu, mu is the Greek for M for morphine. This is the target of morphine, which is the most powerful pain reliever that we have. It acts at receptors in the central nervous system called the mu receptor. If you make a mouse, a genetically engineered mouse that doesn't have a mu receptor, you can give them a ton of morphine and it has no effect, no analgesia, no addictive properties, no effect on respiration. Very recently, uh, Brian Kabilkit at Stanford was able to crystallize the mu opioid receptor, so we know not only its structure, but its conformation. So how does this have to do with the placebo effect? Why am I talking about it? Now remember, I said we had this modulatory pathway that's running from north to south, downward through the central nervous system, from cortex, hypothalamus, midbrain, medulla, and spinal cord. If you take a cannula and you microinject a small amount of morphine into any of these sites, here is the amygdala, here is the periaqueductal gray, here is the medulla, here is the spinal cord, Anywhere that you inject morphine in this pathway, you'll get an analgesic effect. Furthermore, and even more incredibly, if you give morphine systemically and you block the mu receptor at any one of these sites, you'll completely block the analgesic effect of morphine. Furthermore, we now know that this pathway contains endorphins, endogenous opioid peptides that act at the mu receptor. These were discovered in 1975 by Hughes and Kosterlitz, called the Enkephalins. They're five amino acid peptides, quite short, and they're present throughout 
this modulatory pathway, this stain is a rat periaqueductal gray. The yellow color is an antibody against enkephalin. So you can see it's, this pathway is jam-packed with an endogenous opioid. Is there any evidence that these endogenous opioids can relieve pain? The answer to that is clearly yes. If you activate this descending pathway, let's say here in the periaqueductal gray, let's say that we've injected a mu agonist or we've electrically stimulated, and then we look down here at the spinal cord uh, for pain responses. If you put the morphine here, you see that the animals stop responding. Their latency to respond to a heat stimulus goes way up from four seconds to 10 seconds. If you block the mu receptor anywhere along this pathway, in this case, it's in the medulla, that's this pathway, you immediately reverse that analgesic effect. So what that means is that activating the system at this level causes the release of an endogenous opioid at this level, and that produces the analgesic effect. So what this is telling us is that when you give somebody morphine and it acts on this pathway, the effect is amplified by the release of an endogenous opioid. It's almost as if this natural plant substance, morphine, has mimicked the endogenous opioid effect and then amplified it by acting at multiple sites in the central nervous system. So we have now this modulatory pathway we have a receptor, we have an endogenous ligand. How can we show that this has anything to do with placebo analgesia, all right? So the way we can do that is take advantage of what the pharmaceutical industry has given us, which is a selective antagonist of morphine, a selective blocker of the mu receptor. Everyone should know about this drug. It's called naloxone. It sits on the receptor, but it doesn't do anything. It just displaces anything else that might be working on it. The reason you need to know this is if you're working in the emergency room and someone comes in with an overdose of heroin or Oxycontin or any one of a number of opioids, you can give them naloxone and wake them up immediately. It's, a, it's an antidote to the poisonous effect of opioids, exogenous opioids. But we can take advantage of what the pharmaceutical industry has given us with this antagonist to ask, well, if endogenous opioids produce pain relief and the expectation of relief produces uh, pain relief, is it possible that the pain relief due to expectation of relief, i.e. the placebo effect, is it due to release of an endogenous opioid? We can find out if we can block it with naloxone, that means that that's how it works. And in fact, there is some evidence that that happens. Remember our tourniquet pain test where we gave uh, a, a blood pressure cuff above systolic, people are exercising, we're looking at their pain tolerance, that's shown here. They got a mild placebo effect, then we conditioned it with morphine a couple of days. Okay, and then we got a very nice placebo effect due to conditioning with morphine. Now, what happens when we do the same thing, but instead of giving a placebo on day four, we actually give naloxone with the placebo. What this shows is that when you include naloxone with the placebo, you don't get any placebo effect. So what this means is that the expectation of relief is leading to the release of an endogenous opioid and that in and of itself is producing relief, which is really kind of amazing when you think about it. The expectation of relief is acting on the same circuits at the same receptor as morphine, the powerful analgesic, because morphine mimics the effect of these endogenous opioids. Very exciting. Is there any evidence that placebo can cause the release of endogenous opioids? And in fact, using positron emission tomography, you can use a labeled ligand for the mu receptor. In this case, it's C11 carfentanil. This compound, this radio ligand, can be delivered in trace amounts. Carbon 11 is an unstable 
isotope with a half-life of about 20 minutes. So you can give a, this C11 carfentanil to people. You can scan them. You can see what the distribution of the receptor is. Then you can give them a placebo. If you get the release of an endogenous opioid, it's not labeled. It should displace the labeled carfentanil from the mu receptor. And in fact, that's a way of looking at the possibility of endogenous opioid release. And if you look here, which is in the periaqueductal gray, you can see that this is one of the sites where the expectation of relief, placebo, causes the release of an endogenous opioid. So that's direct evidence that expectation of relief, of relief can cause relief through the release of endogenous opioids. So we have the animal work and we've got the human work pointing to the same places in the brain and the same receptor in those places. It's very powerful evidence. But what about other sites along this modulatory pathway? Oh, we can use fMRI, functional magnetic resonance imaging, to ask the question, are there particular sites along this modulatory pathway that we can see are activated by this expectation of relief? And in fact, there's very good evidence. This is work uh, from Hamburg in Germany, again, using fMRI. Uh, they can look for changes in blood flow in the hypothalamus that's shown here, which is co correlates with this part of the brain, periaqueductal gray shown here, and the medulla shown here. All three sites show activity that's correlated with the degree of relief from administration of placebo. Even more remarkable, they've been able to solve the technical difficulties of doing functional imaging in the spinal cord, and that's shown here. If you look very closely, you'll see a little blip here in the dorsal horn of the spinal cord. That correlates with the activation of pain receptors in the periphery that would be over here. So that's activity. Now what you can do is you can ask the question, does the expectation of relief cause a reduction in the signal elicited by painful stimuli at the level of the spinal cord? And in fact, that's what this data shows. Here's placebo. There's very little bold activity. This is the control. You can see it's a pretty big response. So this reduction here between placebo and control is due to administration of the placebo and this effect is reversed by naloxone. So again, I think the evidence is pretty definitive that when you expect relief, you activate this descending modulatory system, endogenous opioids are released, and you get pain relief with this specific circuitry. So I think uh, we've got very good evidence for how placebos actually work at the neural level, which is quite remarkable. 